pastor over here. Johnny, come up here, brother. I saw the finger of God. I saw the finger of God hit you. And we want to hear what the, what the Lord is saying. I don't know if we're giving this or not.
something's happening in the body of Christ. There is a shift going on. Now you can be part of that shift wow. <clears throat> for the greatest outpouring of souls that has ever hit planet Earth. Yeah. Or you can be part of the shift that says, I really don't want to get any further in the things of God. I'm comfortable as the Christian that I'm in, <laughs> as you are. Whoops. And that you don't want to. How many of you are tired of level ground? How about it? Say, I want more God. I want more God. There's got to be more. I want to. I want to know you, God. I want to see you. How many want to see glimpses of heaven? How many want to see Jesus face to face? How many want to see people coming out of wheelchairs and people being healed? How many want God to flow through you and reach you? What the shift is this? God said. From this day forward, and today, I'm saying as of today, from this day forward, it will not be a few people that I use. I have gifts, and I have talents in every single one of you. Amen. I have gifts in every one of you. You might not even know that gift yet, but God's going to pull, because he said part of the shift is you are going to find out that those little diamonds that God has inside of you that you haven't seen yet is going to come to the front and all of a sudden you're going to go, God's using me and I never thought he could use me this way and I never knew that God's anointing would fall through me and flow through me and, and you're going to find your niche where you belong. And God says part of the shift is this, this scripture. Verse 17, 1 Corinthians 1, 17. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. So what it's saying is, the world out there really doesn't want to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. They look at us and say, I'm going to believe in a man that died on the cross 2,000 years ago. I'm going to believe on a man that got beaten so bad that his body was like blood from one end to the other, and that he had a crown on his head that was pushed down so hard that blood was running through in, in his eyes. Why? But you know that crown that was placed on his head was for your healing. And a lot of people say, what kind of healing? Well, some of you have mental problems. Anybody have mental problems? Well, you wouldn't know if you had them anyway. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's part of being mental. <laughs> but anyway, some of us have emotional problems. Some of us have uh, bipolar, schizophrenic, um, as crazy things that we do. And, and it is, 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 it's not a word, it's not even in the dictionary, it just means we have quirks, there's another word for it, we have silly quirks, but you know what, God, his crown was to take care of all those mental problems and hurt problems and emotional problems, and then his body was beaten so that he'd take care of all our physical problems, and he took our sins, and he took our pain, and he took our sorrow on the cross. But now he's saying, Paul is saying, to the world that's craziness, it's foolishness. But to us, it is the power of God. And part of the shift is, and I want you to hear it, is God said, I'm getting ready to take my church home. I'm getting ready. My son's coming soon. <clears throat> and before he comes, my bride to be will be white and spot without wrinkle, and I will have a glorious church. And the gates of hell, even though it looks like hell, is coming against the church because there's some crazy stuff going in the church going on right now in churches around the world. Can you believe that they actually have strippers in churches? <laughs> and they do on dance pole and they, they share the gospel when they're stripping. Now that is not God. That is not God. There's some crazy stuff going on in the body of Christ. Bad stuff. 
And God's not happy with it. God's not happy with it. And so we need to realize that God is going to, don't worry. Because when you see some of these situations going on, you're going like, I go, what? And then there's some churches that think it's okay to drink. No, it's not okay to drink. It's not even okay to drink a glass of wine. You know why? Even if you don't have a problem with the drink. How many people in your church maybe have an alcohol problem, and if they set one little sip, they're back, falling back again. We need to be a light, an example, not helping somebody get back because they see you drinking a beer. And you're saying, well, I only drink one beer. Yeah, but the other person maybe will start with one beer and drink three cases yeah. every time they drink. So you're a stumbling block. Yeah. And what does Jesus say about stumbling blocks? It's better if you have a millstone tied to your neck and you're cast into the sea than to cause one of these to fall back. Right. So God, God has said in this message today, oh, and you might not like this message. Yeah. By, by the way, he is saying to God, keep you honest. You might all... Say the pastor, pastor's leader. Wow, we didn't like her message. Well, too bad. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Too bad. I'm to live what God told me. Amen. Amen. He's saying for us to get stumbling blocks out of our life. That's true. He's saying to us, be a light in darkness. Right. Let them see the light, because he said it's not about baptizing. Paul said, I, God didn't call me to baptize. He told me to preach the gospel. Yeah. To preach the gospel. For in the gospel is the power. And God wants the power back in the church. And that power comes when you talk about Jesus Christ and him crucified. The power comes when you lift up Jesus and the cross of Calvary and what he did and what he went through. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And God's getting ready. Pastors, get ready. I'm telling you the truth. You are going to be very soon doing four and five services on Sunday. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Already churches in America are having, I just, I'm just going to New York right after these. The next, next bunch of services I do is in New York City. And the pastor said to me, Sister Jones, first of all, he said, your website's wrong. You have a Sunday morning service at 10 and you have a 6 o'clock service at night. I go, yeah. Because we don't have a Sunday morning service like that. I said, oh, I must have put him in there wrong. He goes, yes, you did. So can you fix it? I said, no problems. Sorry, you know, I apologize. And he says, this is, and he said, I need to ask you. So that's what you're used to? And I went, somewhat. Sometimes I do three services on Sunday. He said, well, at our church, because we're growing so fast, I have five services on Sunday. So oh, you know, yeah. you know, I said, what, what, you didn't do a few? I said, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You want to do all five? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? Now, I've never done five services in a day, but I have done four. And when I did four in one day, <laughs> by the fourth one, they were just holding me up as I went from person to person, laying hands up. Because I'm falling over, and they're falling over, and oh, and I'm like, are you kidding? By the time I go to five services, oh my God, it's going to be awesome. But what God is saying is revival is getting ready to break forth. And let me share this with you, which is very important. We need to be like Paul. And it says, it goes on and says, in verse 19, where it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So he's going to say, he's going to break down all these crazy people's negative thoughts. He's going to prove that there is an ark on the mountain. He's, they're going to prove, these scientists are going to prove that the Jer well, Jericho walls really went down. It fall, they went straight down into the ground. And so all these scientists are going to scratch their heads and say, you know what? We're finding the answers to everything we're searching for in the Bible. And so what God's going to do is he's going to change and rearrange stuff so that the harvest is going to be so easy to lose the floor. Because it's ready. Amen. And you're going to have a few people tell you to go fly a kite, spit at you. I've had people try to shoot me in the service. 
I've had people, you know, I've had people try to beat me up in India. I'll never forget it. I've had people, both sides of me, walking like this as everybody destroys rocks. I've had stone. I've had people pour beer bottles on my head and spit at me while I'm talking to them about Jesus. And you know what? You don't retaliate. Although part of me would say it, like to punch you in the face. Yeah. <laughs> but then the Christian part of me said, just one time I actually wanted to hit somebody. Actually, one time I did hit somebody. But anyway. <laughs> I better share it now. Because you're all going to think I'm terrible. When I was in India, they went in to schedule some meetings. We were going to do some big crusade meetings, and I was sitting. They said, sit, sit out here, Sister Joan, and just sit. Behave yourself. I said, okay. So I had a little auto harp, and uh, kids were just getting out of school. And I started playing this auto harp, which I don't really know how to play it, but I struck that the kids liked the noise and the sound they're good, and I don't know what I play. I don't know how to play. Pretty soon, all these little kids, like 30, 40 kids, come out of school, they're all little Indian uh, kids. I started teaching them, gee, because I don't know how to speak their language, I Jesus loves them. I'm teaching them a Christian song. And so, anyway, so a teenager comes by and he's having a fit, but he can speak English. Yeah, he must be talking to people about Jesus in this country. Don't you know it's against the law? And I went, well, I didn't know it was against the law. I'm just teaching these kids. I'm not preaching. I'm just singing, teaching them song. Well, anyway, when the people started to come out of the building, I needed to go. And so when I started to go, he slugged me. This teenager just hauled up and slugged me. So I just went. Then I went, oh, dear Lord. <laughs> well, it was just not reaction. It was so fast. It was like, boom, boom. And, uh, and so he started screaming in his dialect. Attack, attack, attack. So all of a sudden, the whole village comes out and starts throwing rocks at me. And I'm, I'm walking towards where all the other people are. And we hop in the Jeep because I have 30, 40 people throwing rocks at me. And we get in the Jeep and we're putting the gears through the Jeep as fast as we are to get out of town. And then throwing rocks at us all the way out. And I, I was part of the mission team. This is way before I even was ordained. This is one of the big Christian. And the team leader, boy, you know, not, I do mission trips now. Anybody did that to me, maybe each other. But anyway, this was their relationship, and I was just a guest. And they said, look at what you've done, Sister Joe. You're just like Paul. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He said, he either went into town and started a revival or a riot. And just look what you did. <laughs> but God saved to the church, listen to me. He says, chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 1. For I, brother, when I came to you, did not come with excellent speech or the wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you with, I, I was with you with weakness and fear and much troubling, and my speech and preaching were not in enticing words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should be in the should not be in the wisdom of man, but the power of God. So I'm saying to you prophetically this morning that you get ready because God's going to increase the power in the church. Amen. God's going to blow a wind of revival on the church. You know, there's been waves of revival from this season to that season to this season to that season. But are you ready for it? Yeah. How many of you are really ready for it? Yeah. Woo! No, you aren't. <laughs> No, you aren't. No, you aren't. No, no, I'm telling you the truth. Okay, when Azusa Street hit, and I know some of you don't know what Azusa Street, but when this uh, black man came from back east to LA, and he prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed, and prayed he was blind in one eye, just a nobody. But he prayed so long that a revival broke forth. When that revival broke forth, it wasn't even in a big building. Your building might be as big as that one. Maybe. I don't know. I've never been there. Huh? This is bigger than there. But that revival started, and it went on and on and on for years. And it, the doors never shut. So are you ready to have service go 24-7 for 7 to 10 years? <laughs> are you? Oh, really? And we're talking like, could you stand up and do praise and worship, not stop for five years? No. 
Pastor, could you get up and preach nonstop for when this goes on until Jesus comes? <laughs> One service after another after another. Until the next preacher rises up in the house and I got plenty of work. That's right. And that's what I'm saying. That's exactly, that's exactly what God's saying. Amen. You're not ready. You're almost ready. Okay. You're going to have to have a lot of people to take care of these children. You can't have the same person in children's church 24-7 for months and months and months or maybe years. Amen to that. <laughs> you can't have the youth kids going off, and, and you have to prepare. And when you have everything ready, it's going to start happening, and it's going to happen starting today. Woo! Starting today. Are you hearing that? God's getting ready to switch the switch. Thank you, Lord. And it's happening. It's starting to happen in different churches around the world. It is happening. It's like it's spurts and spurts of fire. Little fires falling, falling, starting fires. And some of the churches are going longer and longer and happen to have Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And, and they don't have it all set up, so they have to have 20 or 30 different praise teams. Yeah, and they have to have 20 or 30 or 40 children's church and, and youth groups and, and preachers so that you can alternate. Some go this day and and some go this many hours and then somebody else comes in and they leave and go get some rest because God, when he starts it, is going to keep it going. About souls. It's all about souls. All about and souls. the people are going to come in come and people are going to come to Jesus because how many of you know this? Some of you might be here in the drug program. Yeah. Okay. okay. Programs can't change you. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yeah. Books are good, but they can't change you. Doctors are needed, but they can't change you. Psychologists maybe are needed, but they can't change you. The only one that can really break the addiction Amen. and change your life Amen. is the blood of Jesus. Amen. The only one that can really heal bodies is the cross of Calvary. Amen. And when we get back to preaching, Jesus Christ has been crucified with power. There's so many churches in America that talk about Jesus, preach about Jesus, do all that, and then people come to church and they go home the same way. And they come to church and they go home the same way. And they come to church and they go home the same way. Uh-uh. 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 He said, my church is going to be a healing station. Yes. A place where the manifestations and the operation of the Holy Spirit can flow. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to start with verse 3. Okay? Philippians 2 verse 3. Very important that you get this. Are you all hearing me? You need to hear this and it needs to sink in your heart. Fulfill my joy, being like-minded, having the same love, being in one accord and one mind. So the way revival is going to happen is the whole church has to get on the same page at the same time. Come on. Same page and every one of you. Stay focused. Every one of you stay focused yep. and you start saying, what's my thing? What's my gift? <coughs> and God will start showing you. Your gift might be to start a senior citizen little meeting. Your gift might be to start something for kids and do outreaches in the park. Your gift might be for the homeless. You, you all have different gifts. And God is saying, I put everything, listen to me very carefully, I put everything I need in each city to win that city. That's right. Yes. You follow? Everything that's needed in each city is sitting in here and in this city, maybe in a different church. But what I'm saying, everything that's needed to win the city, because Jesus is going to come after everyone that can be saved, that will be saved, gets saved. And when that last person, because God knows those that are going to go to heaven, God already knows those that are going to pray the prayer and ask Jesus in the heart. And when the last one that he knows is going to get saved, says, dear Jesus, come into my heart, we're out of here. 
Because his heart is all about souls. God's heart is that all be saved, and not one fall short. But we cannot win the city without everybody working together, like an army, like an army. And everybody fitting, joint, joint fitting together, so that this burden or this challenge that God is giving to us is not going to be so heavy. You can't put it on one person. You can't put it on one preacher. You can't put it on one physical preacher. You can't put it on one person to give away food every week, or one person to carry the cross, or whatever. You can't put it on one person because it's too big. It's a God thing. God wants to use each and every one. Some of us might just be small for And then all the money that you need to take the city is only in the city. Everything that you need is here because God wants to bring it. And then look, fulfill my joy of being like-minded, having the same love of one accord and one thing. So you have to get in one way. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others higher than himself. Let each one of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Yes. And you see, why wasn't Sousa Street such a great revival? Because Seymour, this, this pastor, that a black pastor with a blind eye, they didn't control Azusa Street. Then sometimes they didn't even know who was going to be the preacher. Right. Sometimes they didn't know who was going to get up and do prophetic songs. And they said that when they go see Seymour, he, believe it or not, you, you know what those boxes are that used, they used to be crates that you put fruit in? They used to have these boxes that you put fruit in. He, he would have that wherever, somewhere, and he would kneel down and he would get in the box. And could you imagine that pastor kneeling down and getting in the box? And while the meetings were going on, they had 24-7 which one said again, that's right. Prayer going on. So on the top floor was people that would come around the clock praying nonstop. For how many years did that Susan Street go on? Anybody know how many years? How many? Seven or eight years. Seven or eight years. It just kept going and going and, and people, it spread throughout the world. People came from all over the world and it came into this small building that's smaller than this and went out, in, out, in, came, filled the Holy Spirit. Priests came in, people from other churches that didn't even know about the Holy Spirit came. People got saved. People came in off the streets. It was in LA. People would come, homosexuals would get saved, Les lesbians would get saved, drug addicts would get saved. They didn't even know why they were drawn in by the Holy Spirit because it was the Holy Spirit. Because a man was humbling himself and he in, in a box. He didn't know all the preaching. And the one thing that was wonderful is he didn't come that attitude. I started this revival. I started this revival, so I'm in charge of it. So what am I saying? God's getting ready to do something. Are you hearing me? God's getting ready to do a hover over Penn Valley and different parts of the United States. And he's looking, the eyes of the Lord are looking to and fro. Where can I find a church? It is already operating in love, what you are. It's already prepared the ground. And they're ready for me to explode. So if this happened right now, if it happened right now, you're not ready. I'm just being honest. You don't have enough people to have 24 prayer, uh, prayer warriors going on. You don't have enough musicians to go 24 hours straight. You don't have enough. You might have enough preachers, but you know what I'm saying. We need daycare. We need this. And we need people to go out, put out flyers. It's bigger than us. Yes. It's got to be a God's thing. What's not the revival? <coughs> Strike. 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 Seymour decided to get married to the girl, the lady that was in the prayer meeting when he started the revival. And the rest of the people in the church thought he can't get married. Blah, 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 blah. 
what class the revival, every revival has fallen apart because of two things. That's right. Two. Sin in the camp. Sin in the camp and gossip. <laughs> Are you hearing me? That's not true. They start talking and you get somebody saying, you know what, someone so I didn't like the music. Why well, didn't like what they preached? And then, 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 then. You have something good to say? Shut up. <laughs> take tape and put it across the mouth and you come to church and you got nasty people around your face. They know you have a problem. So if you see that around their face, their mouth, don't tell them nothing. <laughs> For God's sake, don't go and say anything to them because once the tape gets off, that's right. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying today, uh -oh. revival. Five. But let's use Jesus as an example. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Jesus was God and equal with God. You hear? Okay. But he made himself of no reputation. You mean he didn't get up and want to resonate? <laughs> this is evangelist Pierce. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, so many people get up and they spend 15 minutes telling everybody what they do, how great they are, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Let's talk about him yes. and how great he is. Yes. Let's lift up Jesus. Let's stop looking up this ministry and that ministry and this guy, you know. And do you know that so and so, he's such a great. No. Stop that. We are, every one of us, pillars, lively yes. stones. Every one of you is a stone. You know, I, uh, asked to go, I went to a globe meeting once. I'm not going to go into the little story. But God gave, I asked God where I fit in. And I always felt like a thug. I went to all these women's things, and I'm like, I don't feel like all the women. They were so elegant. I never was elegant. I'm trying to learn to be elegant. Okay. Trying to learn how to. You know, I need to do my nails. But anyway, I'm trying to be elegant, but I never was elegant. I was really poor. I was always having nail clothes, and holes, and shoes, and whatever, whatever. But what I'm saying is, so I was always a bullet. So we have to learn to humble. Yeah. To stop thinking we're suffering. And then when God starts the revival, see the when God starts revival and things start happening and everybody starts coming to this church, they start seeing miracles and, and people get saved and you have to go to five services and you have to go to a whole bunch of money or something. And when you have, you can't get out there in the highways and byways saying, uh, you know, when we go to church, our church is better than your church. <laughs> Look what happens at our church. No. He humbled himself. Though he knew he was God, and he is God, he humbled himself, and it said, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Being in the form of God, he did not consider robbery to be equal with God, because he was God made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death of the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, those in heaven, those on earth, and those under the earth. And every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ as Lord. And that's the only way to get to step to heaven is to confess Jesus as Lord. And so we need to realize it's not about us. It's what Jesus wants to do. And so everybody's going to have different positions and nobody is more important than the other. Amen. You have to remember that. Well, I'm changing poopy diapers back at the children's baby uh, in the nursery. That's just as important. Yes. That you hold those little babies. Yes. And when you're holding those little babies up, you change the little poopy diaper. Yes. You hold it and you just bring it home to the Or you just hold it. Jesus, I pronounce blessings over you. 
Yeah. That's why he went to that one orphanage, and we all went into the nursery. And we told him, to I'm telling you, talk about breaking your heart when you know that these babies have been left in cribs all day long and don't get anybody holding you know, them. We're talking newborns. And some of those newborns look like they were lifeless. And even when we try to play with them, it's like, you know, when the one year olds. Because baby needs to be held. Yes. And loved. It needs to feel that security. And it needs to be loved even when you're, it's right here. And you just put your hands on your stomach. And this baby is blessed by the favor of God. Because God, God is the one that obeys families. Satan wants to destroy families, and then not only do we have a family family where we should have a healthy family, but then we have a family of God, which you should be all, and you are a family of God, and God wants to use you. So now go with me to Ephesians. I mean Colossians. Go with me to Colossians. <coughs> Colossians chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 1. If you then are raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting at the right hand. Set your mind on the things above and not on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Then Christ who is our, our life appears, then you shall also appear with him in glory. Go with me to verse 10. And having put on a new man who is re renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created. It's like, how to get the image of Christ? And what I was saying is, Jesus, how he humbled himself, I'm going back to the last scripture, how God said, how Jesus humbled himself. And if you're going to have to revival, true revival, there has to be a humble spirit. A humble spirit, not somebody saying, well, well, they're preaching and people are falling out of town and I'm pretty good to No, we're all That's right. We're all equal. That's right. I don't care if you come in and your job is to go to Walmart. I don't know if it's Walmart right here. Go to some store and bring in 10 cases, put them in the refrigerator so everybody has both of them. Because Jesus said, you give somebody a glass of water in my name, you receive everybody's blessing. You receive everybody's blessing. So whatever you do to help humble yourself to prefer, go ahead. Let me promote your meetings. Let me promote your Sunday school. Let me promote your youth groups. Let me promote what you're doing. And not always promote you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we, Jesus, the last thing it said is he humbled himself to the point of death. Yes. Listen very carefully. Our lives could be all about. Are you hearing me? There is an agenda from Satan, really, to kill Christians. Yeah. You know, it used to be kill the Jews. And they still want to do that too. Yeah. But now, there's an agenda. Let's see if we can annihilate, annihilate those people that say they're born again Christians. It's in trouble. But you know what? That won't happen. I read my Bible. And my Bible says, the gates of hell, the devil's going to try, but the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And God is going to have the glory of the church. And Satan better watch out because we're going to slap him silly. We're going to put up our dukes and go, <laughs> we're, going to, we're going to fight the good fight of faith. We're going to have revival fires. And we're not going to get in strife, and we're not going to get jealous if somebody else's praise team or somebody else's preaching is better than ours. And that one that got up and did a special song sounded better than somebody that did it two weeks ago or the. No! Well, their sermon was better, or when they prayed for people, things happened. No! That's what kills revival. That's it. We need to love one another. And turn with me to Ephesians. It's my last scripture. Go 
with me to Ephesians. God is getting ready to shake the church, wake up the church, and all the gifts that are in the church need to come forward, and you need to have tons of people lined up. Lots of preachers lined up. A lot of Sunday school people lined up. A lot of praise leaders lined up. A lot of Sunday school. A lot of evangelists to take the people out on the streets because one person can't take the cross out every single weekend. She needs a weekend now to rest so you can have this team taking them this Saturday and another team taking them the next Saturday and another team. So you have the evangelist teams to go out on different weeks so everybody just does one week out of the month. And you're not burning out the people. You're not burning out the people so they get so burned out that they go, I don't even want to go to that church anymore because they don't work, work too much. Because if you have enough teeth, then you have that extra time when you're off. Not off the church, you're still coming to church. But that extra time to fill, fill yourself up with the presence of God. Because if you get burned out, there's nothing that comes out. So you have to have that time when you can go down to the river, go to a park, sit in your favorite chair, and pray, and say, Lord, use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. Use me, Jesus. I don't know about you, but I said, God, I love preaching in church. I do. I said, but Lord, how about baseball fields? I even been driving around looking what baseball fields look like. I would go watch them. And I even look at I go out there and look at the seats and say, okay, there's almost a thousand seats here in these pictures. And I've even gotten some that are smaller. I don't know who comes out and maybe people go out to baseball fields. And I've seen some of the real small parks. And they only have 500. I said, God, maybe I could start with this little bit right here. This little thing I made me twice. And then the devil says, Really? You know, you did a crusade. Remember, you went to the Colosseum. Do you remember when you preached at the Anaheim Convention Center? I went down. So there was 200 people there. Do you know what it looks like when the place holds 10,000 people and you have 200 people? <laughs> it looks like a failure. And I did a crusade in the Philippines and I rented a place. It cost thousands. Well, not thousands, but 6,000 to me is a lot of money for just three nights. That was just to the Philippines. And only 1,000 people showed up. But about 250 got saved. And I got hurt. And I went, have you got saved? Fair enough. I said, but I could only get people to come out to me when I preach. I said, could have looked for me crazy me in a football field. So I heard God say it again. Fair enough. So I have my first crusade schedule. And maybe another one. One's going to cost $8,000. The other one's going to cost 6000 Just for three days. And I said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'll do it. I don't know why I'm going to get the money out. But she'll speak to people. You'll speak to people all over the United States. And the money will come in. And then I'm going to start these crusades because this is what I think. I want to see souls. I know a plate, and I want to be used to keep God. How many of you saying, I just want to see a soul? What? What? No, you, you don't start out with Colosseum. You know, I started out with one Lord, let me be my neighbor. Lord, let me go door to door and see if there's anything in the neighborhood. Let me go to the park with God. And then pretty soon it was two. And then pretty soon, before I knew it, I was preaching in churches. 
you don't know how God's going to use you. Just start out with one, 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 one. Just like God. Put somebody in the town on your heart. And you say, God, put one person. Everybody raise your hand. Put your finger like that. God, just give me a soul. Say it. Just let me start with one. Lead me. Show me who it is. Help me be obedient. Help me be like Jesus. Let me die to myself and my own wants and my own thoughts and my own time and my own agenda. And you use me. Start with me. Stir up the talents and the gifts that are in me. And just start with one. I thank you, God. That you will use me. And I will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to look and listen until I see that one. And it might take months of me talking to them. But I'm going to stay on that one. And love them and love them until they come to Jesus. And that's what God is saying to you. And I'm going to close with this scripture of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. You've already been blessed. You have spiritual blessings. They are been given to you. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before him. That's why Azusa Street happened. They were holy people. And I'm not talking about no makeup and that stuff. Holy in their heart. Yeah. Their heart was single-minded. Lord, let us walk together in love. Let us prefer one another in love. Let us pray, pray, pray until there's a breakthrough. And they were persecuted having predestined us to adoption to sons of Jesus Christ to himself according to his good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his glory which he has made to abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence having made known to us the mysteries of his will according to his good pleasure and his purpose in himself. That at the dispensation when Jesus came and paid the price, he made he knitted us, you and I are now knitted together as one hand. So we all move one. We move this way as one. We go forward as one. Because we're one in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, um, go with me to 3, 3.14, and Paul says, I'm still on the TV, 3.14. For this reason, Paul says, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you here in this church according to the riches of his glory, yes. to be strengthened with the might through the spirit of the inner man, that Christ will be seen through every member of this church, that when you go out in the highways and byways, they will see, and they will say, where do you go to church? Yes. Why do we see this? What is it we feel? <laughs> That's not in the scriptures. So read For Christ, may dwell in your heart through faith and that you as a church be rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width the length the depth the height and to know the love of christ which passes knowledge how can how can we understand Marty and i was talking the other day and actually, I think it's in my newsletter that's coming up. In fact, it is. Marty helps me write my newsletter. He's stepping out. 
last few newsletters he wrote. I said, honey, people are going to know that you wrote it. He goes, they won't. They won't figure it out. That's right. <laughs> and they won't. You know why? Because we're good. We are one. And we both have that same heartbeat. Souls. But in the newsletter, it was like, it will take us a lifetime, a lifetime, to comprehend the death, the burial, and the res resurrection of Christ. I don't think it'll take a lifetime to really accomplish. I mean, we know that He made us one, that He saves us, heals us, delivers us, but I think so much more was done on the cross than we could even comprehend. And that's why Paul said, that I may know him. Is that your heart? I want to know him. I want to know the one that died for me. I want to know that love that took him all the way to the cross. I want to know that love that when they beat him, he never said a word. I want to know that love that will say, Father, forgive them. You know, everybody says, the Jews killed him. I said, no, the Jews did not. We did. He died for us. He died for those that aren't born yet. He died for that little baby that's here. He died for the little boy that was dancing around him. He died for us. That kind of love. Are you willing to say, you're my Lord? Dear Lord, kill this flesh. Change me. Rearrange me. Break me. That I can walk in That you may comprehend with all the saints what is the length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses any knowledge you can even think of. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask for me, according to the power that works in us, to the glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Every other comes. First of all, to be part of this family and be part of this great waves and waves of God's glory that's going to hit Penn Valley and in different towns all around the world. And this unity where it's going to be teamwork, teamwork, and lots of people doing different things. You've got to join the family first. You've got to join the family. How do you join the family? You join the family by believing in Jesus Christ and asking him into your heart. He takes us out of the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of Jesus. Ever ask about it? If you're not sure if you were to die right now and be in heaven, and you know you're not living right, and maybe you're doing things wrong, and you're saying, I need to get right with God. I need to get right with God right now. I want to be part of what's coming. I want to be part. I want to be hooked into the family. And that's you. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. That I want to be on fire for God, hooked up to the family of God, 